Okay, for volume of cones, we are still talking about volume, so we are no longer um, trying to measure like the area or anything like that. We are just trying to take a three-dimensional shape. I've got a couple of cones here, and you're trying to find the volume of it, which means if I took this cone over to the sink and filled it up with water, how much three-dimensional inside of here space, how much if I had a snow cone, um, would it be completely filled up with that amount? So um, in order to do that for a cone, you have a new formula. Um, the formula is the radius, which the radius of a circle is from the center point to an edge. So it's not all the way across. It's only halfway across. It's from the center to any edge. So that's called the radius. And we are going to square that number. So whatever the radius is, we're going to multiply it times itself. And then we're going to take that amount and we're going to multiply by pi. So the reason we're using pi is because we have circles involved. Cones always have a circular base. And anytime you're dealing with circles, you're probably going to be dealing with the pi symbol. And then we're going to take that and we're going to see how tall the cone is. So we're going to still be multiplying by the height. So we're gonna put times H for the height. And then what you noticed last time with pyramids, they went to a point. So we had to kind of shave some of that volume off. If it was a cylinder and it went straight, you wouldn't have to divide by anything. But because cones go to points, you have to shave off um, a little bit of it. So we're gonna do that by dividing by three. So the volume of a, of a cone is the radius squared times the times pi times whatever the height is divided by three so i have started that process over here radius squared times pi times height divided by three and i just now noticed that some um, worksheets for pi want you to use just 3.14 it wants you to round it off to 3.14 Probably all of you have noticed that your calculators, if you have a scientific calculator like this, you have a pi button on your calculator. So if I were to push that and push equals, it would actually go ahead and give me the whole pi, 3.14159265, and so on. It, it actually represents the whole thing. But for this particular worksheet, it just wants us using just 3.14 and then stopping there. So instead of pushing the pi button on my calculator, I will push 3.14 for that. So let's go ahead and try this first one. My radius is five. I'm gonna do five squared, which again is not 10, it's gonna be 25, but I'm gonna just type it in my calculator, times the pi button would be okay, but for this worksheet, it wants us to use 3.14. So we're gonna do that times the height, which is 11, and then we're gonna click equals, and then we're gonna divide the whole thing by three. So if you're not familiar with where your squared button is, five squared is actually 25, five times itself, five times five is 25, but let's say you didn't know that or you didn't wanna take time to think about it. You could push five and then this little X squared button, so it'll automatically square it for you times 3.14 times my height, which is 11. And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and push equals. I'm gonna encourage you to go ahead and push equals and then divide it by three so that it doesn't just divide the last one by three, but the whole thing. So divided by three equals, and we are gonna have to round that. So it's about 287.8. 8, 3. And the number after the 3 does not bump it up, so it's just going to stay 0. 0.83. And remember, this is cubic inches. Its volume is a, um, a three-dimensional amount because it's like a liquid or an inside amount, so it is cubic. Okay, let's try the next one. What I want you to notice about this one is 26 is the whole diameter. We don't need the diameter. The formula is to use the radius, the R. So I only want you to go from the center to one edge, not the whole thing. So we're gonna start by taking our 26 and dividing by two because I don't want the whole diameter. I just want the radius. So 26 divided by two gives me the radius, which is 13. So in my formula, I'm gonna do 13 squared times pi, which they want us to use 3.14, times the height of this cone. The height of this cone is eight. 
and then we're going to take our whole answer and divide by 3 because it's going to a point. So 13 squared times 3.14 times 8 equals, big number, divided by 3 equals 1,415. I'm going to write that down. Here we go. 1415, 1415 point zero, that's going to stay nine. All right, so that is your volume right there. All right, number three, 18 is our radius. They've already cut it in half for us. It's from the center to an edge. So we have 18 squared times 3.14 for pi times the height of the cone, which is 22. And then we're going to take that whole amount and divide by three. It's going to be real. This all of this is really easy if you have a calculator. So 18 squared times 3.14 or the pi button if that's what your um, assignment wants. In this particular case it just wants us to use 3.14 times 22 equals then divided by 3 equals. So we've got 7,460 point 64. And again, just like in the previous worksheet, this one asked us to um, round to two decimal places. So that's why I went ahead and put both decimal points on there. Okay, the next ones don't give us a picture, but it doesn't matter. We still have the information that we need. We're not trying to guess. We know that the radius is 20, so we're going to do 20 squared. We know that we're going to use 3.14 for pi, and we know that the height is 23 because it tells us that. So we're going to take those numbers and then divide by 3 to get our answer. So there's my dog barking again for you. So we're going to take, sorry, 20 squared times 3.14 times 23. We're going to push equals first, and then we're going to divide by 3. <laughs> my dog is definitely wanting to bark some more. I'm sorry. I'm sure that was really loud. Okay, so the answer for that one is 9,000. 629.33 and it is feet cubed because it's cubic. Okay, we've got a few more. Let's look at the next one. The height is seven. Oh, but this time it gives us a diameter. That's a problem because like I told you, the diameter is the entire distance across a circle from edge to edge. So that whole thing is 24, but we only need a radius from the center to one edge. So we need to take that 24 and divide it in half, which would be 12. So we're going to instead, we're going to use 12 squared times 3.14 for pi times our height, which is 7, and then divide the whole thing by 3 since it goes to a point. So here we go. 12 squared times 3.14 times 7 equals, and then divide it by 3, equals 1,055.04 cubic yards. All right, couple more. I'm sure you guys probably have it figured out by now. Once again, this is the diameter, which is 19. A diameter is the whole distance across. We don't need the whole distance across. We only need how much is the point from the center to one edge. So we're going to have to take 19 and divide by 2. And this is not going to come out evenly, but we can still use it, 9.5. So we're going to do 9.5 squared, because that's our radius, times 3.14 for pi, times the height, which is 13. Oops, that was supposed to be a times. And then that whole thing divided by 3. So 9.5 squared times 3.14 times our height, which is 13, equals divided by 3 equals a really weird number, but that's okay. Um, if it's 0, 0 and this is not going to bump it up, we don't need to put any decimal because 0.0 is the same thing as just leaving it off. So it's just going to be 1, 2, 2, 8. So 1,228 cubic yards. All right, last one of these. Um, our height is 6, our radius, good. It only gave us our radius, which is what we use. So that's going to be 4 squared times 3.14 times the height, which is 6. And then we're going to take the whole thing and divide by 3. 
It's a little less work than the, when they give us the radius. So 4 squared times 3.14 times 6 equals that, divided by 3 equals 100.48. So 100.48 cubic, sorry, cube, inches cubed. Okay, the next page is the ones that um, we would like for you to try on your own. There's three questions there. Um, again, it's just using a formula, so I would like for you to pause the video and try these three on your own, and then you can fast forward through and make sure you did it right. Okay, if you are just checking your work or if you're still not sure, I'll work these out with you really quickly so that you can make sure that you did this right. The radius is three, so we're gonna do three squared times pi, which is 3.14, times the height of this cone, which is nine, and then since the whole thing goes to a point, we're gonna divide by three. All of this is done in your calculator. Three squared, if, it, if you want, if you can't find your squared button, you can also do three times three. So three squared times 3.14 times nine equals, divided by three equals, about, 84.78, and this is cubic inches. The second one doesn't give us a picture, but it tells us everything we need. We need the radius squared, so two squared, times pi, which we're gonna use 3.14, times the height, which is five, and then divide the entire thing by three. So just type that in your calculator, two squared times 3.14 times five equals, divided by three equals. Um, this is gonna be 20.93, the next number does not bump it up, so it's just 20.93 feet cubed. The only thing that might have tricked you, I'm afraid, on this last one is it gave us the diameter instead of the radius. So remember that's the entire distance across the circle instead of only from the center out. So if we need the radius instead, we're going to need to remember to take 18 and divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So I hope you did not use 18, but you instead use 9 squared times 3.14 times the height, which is 6. The whole thing gets divided by 3. So 9 squared is 81, but you can just type it in as 9 squared times 3.14 times 6 equals and then divide it by three. So this final answer is 508.68 yards cubed, cubic yards.